Hi there, and welcome to this video on using fritzing to do a simple schematic. So today I'm going to use fritzing to build what's called a sense of time tester. Now a sense of time tester is a simple 555 timer circuit with an LED and a switch. And it's basically a game, and the goal is to hold down the button and the light will blink, and then you're trying to release the button while the light is on. So it's not a very complicated game, but it's a simple enough circuit that it's a good example to use here um, when doing a schematic in fritzing. So what you see in front of you is fritzing when you first start it up, and by default it just happens to show you know this kind of landing page, and it's and it's already creating a new uh, circuit for us. So it's got three modes: breadboard, schematic, and PCB. Uh, today we're going to focus on schematic. So uh, in schematic mode, I'm basically just going to be dragging in parts and then using them to you know put together the schematic for what I'm for what I'm building. So since I'm starting out with a 555 timer circuit, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build in a 555 timer, or bring in a 555 timer. So here, in the upper right part of the application, is your parts bin. This is the place where you find parts that you want to put into your schematic. And it, there's a whole variety of them. You know, here's parts about an Arduino in the Arduino section. Uh, there's contributed parts from other users. But core tends to have a nice set of parts that we need. Resistors, capacitors, basic types of input devices, output devices like LEDs, seven segment displays, a variety of integrated circuits. And one of the default integrated circuits in the core section is a 555 timer. So I can see it's a 555 timer because it has, says 555 on it right there. So I'm going to drag that part into my circuit. Now I want to mention that if I didn't if I didn't see that there and I wasn't sure and I wanted to search, I could, you could use the search button up here in the parts bin to search for certain parts. So I could say 555 timer and see what I find and I could say, oh look, there's a number of them actually and I could just pick one to use. But I found one in the core bin so I'm going to go ahead and use that one. So here's my 555 timer and you can see it's got all of the pins set up and so really all I have to do at this point is start dragging in my other parts. It's fairly straightforward. So uh, a sense of time tester is basically just an A-stable 555 timer circuit with a few with a simple switch added. So in this model with this A-stable circuit, I'm going to have a couple of resistors. So I'm going to go ahead and bring those in. And uh, this resistor is going to connect at the bottom here. So I'll rotate it. It's going to connect at its bottom to pin seven, and at the top it's going to connect to VCC. So go ahead and make that connection. Now the way I make a connection between pins is I click on the pin itself on the part and you can see it's currently red. And then I drag that to the pin I want to connect to. When pins are connected they turn green. They're red if they're not connected to anything. So there for example I have one part. Now the resistor in my circuit isn't 220. It's supposed to be a 2.2 mega ohm. So I can click on that resistor and go over here to the properties inspector. I can say well I don't need a 220 uh, capacitor, I actually need a 2 point or two, a 220 resistor. I need a 2.2 mega ohm resistor. So I can change that value here under resistance, and then that becomes 2.2 mega ohms. Now I need another resistor. I'm going to go ahead and rotate that, and once again get it lined up. I'm going to say, okay, well this resistor connects actually to the same spot on pin 7 at the top, so I'm going to draw my line to connect that. And then at the bottom it connects to a capacitor. So I'll drag in that capacitor while I'm while I'm here, and I'm just gonna oops, move the text over, and I'll draw that connection as well. Okay, so this resistor I just put in isn't supposed to be a 220 ohm. That's just the default that Fritzing happens to use. It's supposed to be a 100 kilo ohm. So I'll go ahead and modify this. Let's see, oops, 100 kilo ohms. Now it's a 100 kilo ohm. And the capacitor in this case is supposed to be a 1 microfarad. So we'll go ahead and leave that one alone. Alright, so in between the resistor and capacitor, well let's just keep building. So alright, so my resistor and capacitor are here. In between the resistor and capacitor I actually connect to pin 2 and 6 which are bridged together. And So I've drawn that connection now I'm going to connect here to here. You can see that they both turn green now. And okay, this line is kind of, I mean, it's there, it connects, but it, it's diagonal and it kind of looks bad. Uh, I can straighten that out by adding a, a straightening point by just clicking somewhere on the wire and then dragging down. 
So that looks a little bit cleaner, and you, you want to keep your schematics looking as clean as possible. Okay, next I'm going to bring in another capacitor, because there because there's a capacitor that connects to pin 5 here. And so I'll bring in my part, and I'll draw the connection. And once again, I see it turns green, which is really important. And this capacitor is supposed to be a 0.1, because it's just the standard capacitor on pin 5 of the timer. So uh, I'll go ahead and put that in as 0.1. It becomes a 0.1. And down below here, this capacitor and this one, and also pin 1, are going to connect to ground. Now, if I want to add ground to my schematic, I can. Um, over, in, over here in my core parts, if I scroll down a little bit, there's a section entitled Schematic View, and it's got this ground uh, item. So I'll drag in a ground item just to have a ground, and I'll put it right there. I'm going to connect this pin to ground, and I'm going to connect pin 1 to ground, because that goes that way in this circuit. I'm going to straighten out that line. I'm going to connect the bottom of my capacitor to ground as well, and straighten out that line a little bit. All right, so I'm going to keep going. Now the top up here, the top of this resistor and pins 4 and 8 on my 555 timer actually connect to 5 volts. So there's another item I'm going to drag over from this section called schematic view called power. I'm going to connect that right there, for example, and it just says 5 volts. Now I could change that, right? You know, it doesn't have to be 5, it could be some other voltage, but I'm going to go ahead and set it for 5. And I'm going to connect 8 and 4 together, because they do connect together. And then I'm going to connect that to pin 5, or not pin 5, to the 5 volt power supply, and that one to the top of the resistor, and once again, straighten out the line. Okay, so that's a nice connection there. Uh, another thing that my circuit needs, well, I'll go ahead and move this text while I'm doing this just to make it more straightforward. Now the other thing my circuit needs because it is a sense of time tester is an LED and uh, current limiting resistor. So I'll go ahead and go back up on core to the very top where my resistor is and I'll add my current limiting resistor to my output. And it is supposed to be 220, so that's okay. Now, I want to point out something interesting, that at first glance I may say, oh good, my resistor is connected to my output. And even if you zoom in and look, it looks like the wires are connected. But you can tell that they're not because they're red. So even though I've placed the two parts right next to each other, fritzing does not automatically connect them. If I want to connect them, I have to manually do it, and it turns green when it's connected. So that's an important thing to keep track of. You don't want to have accidental non-connected items. So now I'll bring in my LED that I want to add connect my LED to the other end of the resistor and the top of the LED to power because this LED happens to be wired in active low and this and fritzing gives it kind of a nice name because that happens to be the default part LED 1 red 633 nanometers but if I needed to change that to something else I could uh, I can go to this drag down box and I could pick other colors other whatever I need but red sounds fine to me for now so I'll just leave it that way all right, so this is actually just a circuit for a standard A-stable circuit, but, but I said that I was building a sense of time tester, which means I forgot a part, right? I mentioned there was a switch you had to push. Well, the switch in the sense of time tester actually goes right here between this connection point and the resistor. So I need to add that, so I forgot to add that. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe out that connection and that one. I'm going to say, mm, maybe I need to move that down because I need to add a switch. So I'll go over here, still in my core bin, I'm looking at input. I'm trying to remember what kind of switch is it that I have. Oh yeah, I have one of these, a generic push button with the four pins. So I'm going to drag in one of those, and I'm going to rotate it so that it's facing the right direction. And this switch is kind of nice because even though it has four pins, only it only really has two real connections. So I'm going to see if I can put that in. That's nope, still not quite the right size, so I'll move my capacitor down more. And if it still isn't the right size, maybe I should keep moving things down so that I have space. Oops. So just to make my life easier, I'll delete that, move that, rebuild that connection, and I'll put in my switch here. Once again, that's not connected unless I actually connect it and it turns green. Oops. Do the same thing here, actually connect it, make it turn green, move that one up, move that one up. Okay, so now I've added in my switch, and I'll move its text just so it lines up more with it. Oh, and I forgot, I need to re-add my connection here. And I noticed that because I saw these two wires, these two pins were red, and when they're red, that means they're not connected to anything. So I'm going to go ahead and re-add the connection 
just like that. All right, so I'm going to do a quick inspection of it and say, okay, um, yeah, all my pins are connected because they're all green. I don't see any red. I've identified which uh, wires are power and which wires are ground. But one thing I haven't done is actually shown where power is going to come from, right? Because I'm doing a full schematic. I need to actually show where power is going to come from. So still in my core bin, there's a power section. And in the power section, you can find a 5 volt voltage regulator, which is just a standard 7805 voltage regulator. So I'm going to drag that one in. So if I bring that one in, then if I remember correctly, my voltage regulator on the input needs a 0.33, and on the output needs a 0.1. Move that text over so it's easier to read. Okay, so this one should be 0.33. There we go, 0.33 microfarads. Now, when I change the values on these parts, sometimes it's kind of annoying because I can't just add something. So right now I'm hitting the, the, the period, but it won't add it. But if I put the zero first, then it'll add it. Fritzing likes to keep this value valid at all times, so you may have to fiddle with how you enter the numbers to get it to take, but that's okay. And now these connect, oops, let's try that again. Connect this wire here and connect this wire here, make the lines nice and straight. And, oh, whoops, I forgot to connect my input pin to the actual capacitor. I can tell that because it's red. Even though they're touching, it's not connected because it's still red. So I'll drag that down to make that all green. Okay, so that's nice. Um, but what I haven't done is I haven't connected the output from my regulator to the actual 5 volts on the part of the circuit here. So I can do that pretty easily. I can just drag that from there to say there, move that up, and I could connect ground down here to ground if I want to, just like that. So that's one way that I can connect the output of my regulator to my circuit, but there's another way too. So I'm going to delete those two lines. What I just did would work, but I'm going to delete those two lines I just added and do it a different way. The other thing I can do is I can just use these symbols again. So I can run down here back to my schematic view, and I can bring in another ground symbol Oops. and just draw that connection. And I can bring in another power symbol, and I can draw that connection. And now Fritzing is smart enough, and you should be too if you're looking at the schematic, to realize that, okay, this 5 volts and this 5 volts are the same thing. They're named the same thing, and this ground and this ground are the same thing. So this is... Making a connection like this, where I've connected them both to power and these two grounds both to ground, Fritzing knows that those two are automatically connected. So I don't have to actually draw the wire if I don't want to. Now, one advantage to doing this is it lets me keep different components of my circuit a little bit more separated. There's less wires running around. So if you look at my schematic, you can quickly go, oh, this is his voltage regulator portion of the circuit, and this is his 555 timer portion of the circuit, and they don't have lots of wires running in between. So it's, it's nice and clean and easy. All right, so let's see. Is there anything else I need for my schematic? I don't think so. So I have all the parts added. I have voltage regulation. Ah, no, there is one more thing I need. So my input voltage to my regulator, I don't have anything showing up. And we're, we're doing a full schematic, so I need to show where that voltage is going to come from. So there's a couple of options by default in Fritzing for power. One is I could do a power plug. You know, it's like a little, it's like the, the female end of a, of a normal wall warp plug. Um, and it just adds a part for that. The other thing I can do is I could do battery. And so uh, what a battery is, is just, you know, it's just battery. So I'm going to use a battery setup just because I can. Uh, rotate that a little bit. Move that down. Whoops. I think the battery's supposed to go that way. And I'm just going to connect that to the input and the other side to ground. There we go. And then I may change this just to specify, you know, it's not going to be 3 volts. I'm going to use a 9 volt battery because that's actually what we're going to use in class. So I've altered that to be a 9 volt battery. And there we go. All right, so let's see. And move that a little bit closer to make it look cleaner. All right, so this has produced my full schematic, and I have all of my parts in place. 
uh, they all have the proper values because I'm going to go through and double check that. I'm making sure all the pins are green so that there's nothing red that I've missed and not and accidentally not connected. So there, I finished my schematic and I can save a copy of it if I want by going up to File, Save, and I can choose a place to put that. Um, the other thing that's useful for you to have is you can also export a copy of this as a PDF. And this is what I want you to do for your report and for submission. So I can export this as a PDF if I want to. And I could say put it on my, uh, just put it in my documents folder. All right, that's all for now. So thanks for your attention. I hope this helps.